in what is really a, a tame description compared to what we've seen here the last few days, that journal story said, some who've worked with Biden, including Democrats, and some who've known him back to his time as vice president, described a president who appears slower now, someone who has both good moments and bad ones. The article also quoted various people. Now, remember, those were mostly Republicans in that article who talked about Biden using note cards, forgetting names, mixing up places, but peppered with statements to the contrary from the White House. So now this is from the New York Times. That's the story that came out this week, this one, the New York Times. In the weeks and months before President Biden's politically devastating performance on the debate stage in Atlanta, several current and former officials and others who encountered him behind closed doors noticed that he increasingly appeared confused or listless or would lose the thread of conversations. Now, not only does that sound uh, familiar, it's actually much, much more direct and pointed and really accusatory. The word confused, for example, comes up several times in the article, doesn't appear at all, not even once in the journal report. Yet you look at the reactions to what the Wall Street Journal reported at the time. And keep in mind, this was just a few weeks ago, almost a, a month, exactly, watch. They're using people around Johnson and Kevin McCarthy to do this, this Trump hit piece on Joe Biden. Local anchors teed up a segment based on a recent dubious Wall Street Journal report about the president's acuity and the election. What usually happens is the media outlet looks at what they've been given and they check it and they make sure it's accurate or they decide whether it's fair or newsworthy. That's not happening. That's not even happening at the Wall Street Journal. What a difference, right? Uh, a month makes, obviously, the story is lapses or whatever you want to call them. And the fact that people notice them, that was already uh, ready to be reported long before the debate. And that's, you know, not just us saying so. The Times says it out right in their story that we just showed you. Where was the reporting? Former New York Times executive editor uh, Jill Abramson this week suggested a reason for the lapse. She says reporters were afraid of being accused of helping Donald Trump. And you know, the other thing, I've seen this over the years that I would argue in terms of why it went unreported, oftentimes there's a reflex in much of the press that you just, you want to do the opposite of whatever's a big story at the time in the right wing media. The cheap fake controversy could be an example of that. I think the border issue for years was an example of that. You know, for years and years before the public outrage finally uh, set in and pushed into better reporting for, from a number of places, you weren't seeing reporting on the border. The media only seem to realize or admit certain things are true when it's too late. None of this is an excuse, certainly, for failing to inform the public or the audience about something as big as this. This was a big, big story, and it was not reported well. Conservative commentator, host of the Death of Journalism podcast, John Ziegler, joins us with more. What would you say about that? First of all, on the kind of the reflex of, and I think there, I, for years there's been something to this, and sometimes there's stories in the right-wing media that just are not true. And then people say, oh, that's not, but then sometimes there are, and the same reflex is applied. I think sometimes it leads to things like this, but what's your thoughts? I agree with that point because in the social media age, if a mainstream reporter seems to be taking a right-wing media narrative, they get attacked and their publication may lose subscribers. The entire business model is now set up in a situation where you have to, you have to basically placate your, your base of support. You have to preach to the choir. That's not good journalism. But this narrative that's now being out there, that somehow the mainstream news media or the White House press corps just didn't know how bad the problem is, is patently absurd. To put this in the movie terms, this is like if in the Superman movies, Lois Lane and the reporters at the Daily Planet just had no idea that Clark Kent was Superman. The, 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 the glasses were just too good of a disguise for them to possibly figure right this out on their own. They've always known this. Nothing changed in reality. What changed was the media's self-interest. And when this was exposed at the debate, they no longer had an option to be part of the cover-up. The news media was part of a cover-up here. We've known for a very long time. We knew through Robert Hur's special counsel interview that is still being censored. We knew when Joe Biden decided not to take part in a softball Super Bowl interview in front of what would have been a massive audience with the Taylor Swift right. phenomenon and everything else, deciding not to do that. There's a reason why all that happened. And the media ignored it because they did not want to be perceived as latching onto a right-wing narrative and be attacked by their own base of support.
All right, it's a good point about the Super Bowl interview, and you know we still haven't seen the president come into the briefing room or really take. And you know he'll do the Stephanopoulos interview, I guess, but I haven't seen him take you know questions as much as as really any other president in recent memory. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.